in today's show. We're looking back at all of the news, including some massive news, and Wednesday's games, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen. We are free and available on all platforms. So much news to get to today. So... Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right, here it is, the news. Damian Lillard is having surgery on his abdominal region. That's the news. The news also suggests that he'd be reevaluated in six to eight weeks. <clears throat> eight weeks reevaluation takes you to the 10th of March, I believe, or around that mark, 8th of March, something like that. Um, which gives you one month left in the season. It gives you smack bang in the middle of the fantasy playoffs. And I can tell you now, there is a very, 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 in fact, very small chance that Damian Lillard is playing again this season. And if you banked on Damian Lillard playing again this season, you, I think, will come out losing. There is no incentive for Lillard to play again this season. There is no incentive for the Blazers to get him to play again this season. Just rest up, have the surgery, fix this problem that's been a problem for four years, and come back next year. Simple as that. We knew that this surgery has been on the cards for months. They're finally given into it. Hopefully, as I've suggested the last couple of weeks here, um, getting anything back for Damian Lillard in a trade was what you needed to do. Can't get anything now. Do not acquire Damian Lillard. Oh, maybe he'll be back in eight weeks and then I'll have him for the playoffs. Don't do it. It is a waste. It's, it's, it's a waste. If I had Damian Lillard in a situation where I could cut him, I would. Also, quick reminder undroppable lists in fantasy leagues are garbage. They should not exist because now if you want to drop Lillard, you have to wait for the fantasy provider to go and update that list. It might take a day. It might take two days. They might, might decide not to update that list. It's arbitrary. That's why, again, one of those reasons why two center restrictions are stupid as well. Or <clears throat> not having injured reserve or only having restricted versions of injured reserve because you've got to wait for somebody else to make that decision for you and it handicaps you versus other people. It's ridiculous. There shouldn't be a undroppable list. But what if someone drops their best player? Well, your commissioner goes in, tells them to pull their fucking head in, and re-adds the player back onto their roster. Simple fix. And that player gets one warning, they do it again, they get kicked out. Simple again. Now, I get in public leagues, you've got to have some sort of fail-safe in there. Public leagues are not what I'm talking about when I'm talking majority of my stuff here. It's when you've got a legitimately real commissioner in place where this stuff just shouldn't be happening. Undroppable lists don't exist. Well, they shouldn't exist. Of course, we all knew that Anthony Simons was a must-roster player in this scenario. The worry, not even a worry, but the, the thought that we had was that Simons is putting up these big numbers, and then maybe he'd drop off to be a top 70, top 60 guy when CJ McCollum returns. Now, I told you this news earlier in the week about CJ being cleared of his lung issue, and just waiting for the birth of his child to come back, so we're just waiting on that, and Norm Powell with COVID, obviously, as well. I will tell you this now, though. I haven't said this to anybody at this point, really. Actually, I might have tweeted it. Um, the return of CJ McCullum is not as cut and dried as what it seemed. <clears throat> I'm not as convinced that this is going to be the case. And this is I am not as confident in this as I have been in the Lillard stuff all season. But I will say this, that I, I was told that a CJ return this year is far from a guarantee for a number of reasons. They're tanking, obviously, right? They're, they're tanking. They're shit They're tanking. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> he might be traded. Where to? I don't want to say what's what I've heard at this point. Um, that's another one. He might be traded. Number three, he's had a collapsed lung, lung issues. He's dealing with a newborn baby. 
and there's a disease around called COVID. And <clears throat> that could be used as some sort of stealth tank cover slash real concern for CJ and his family and his health, where he's just like, no, I'm, my lungs, man, I'm worried about my lungs. I've got a new kid. I want to let this thing fully heal up. I might see you guys again next season. Or not. Or I might see you on a different team. So, this is not a situation where if I had CJ McCollum, I would trade him away for anything the way that I did with Lillard. But what I would do is that if, if someone saw CJ McCollum on my team and they went, all right, Dame's out, CJ's going to go bananas, let's offer something big for CJ, I would take it. Yeah, CJ's got a chance to be a top 35 player rest of season, I think. I think that's a possibility. So if someone wanted to offer me a top 40 guy in exchange for CJ, uh, I would do that. Because again, I, I, what... And I was pretty... When I heard, heard this today from who I was talking to, when they were talking about CJ, I went, oh, hang on a second. I thought he was just waiting for the birth of his child to come back. And he went, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Not sure that he's going to come back any... Not sure he's going to come back at this point. Um, and use the lungs slash COVID slash new baby slash tanking as a reason to maybe sit out quite a bit longer. We'll see. Anthony Simons is out tomorrow. He will probably miss the next two games. He is in Florida for a funeral of his grandfather. The uh, Blazers are on a four-game road trip. Their next game is in Washington. But the reason why I think he'll miss... Sorry, the, the, their second game after Thursday is in Washington. The reason why I have been told don't expect him to play in Washington is that his funeral is in Florida and their third and fourth game on the road trips are in Orlando and in Miami. So rather than him leave Florida to go up to Washington and then come back to Florida, he will stay in Florida mourning the death of his grandfather with his family and then rejoin the team when they join him in Florida. So the next two games for Simon is out. That means Dennis Smith Jr., is a short-term must-add player, along with Ben McLemore. But Smith is going to start and play big minutes for, I would guess, at least two games here. Now, I feel like I'm just talking consistently about Blazers news, but there's a shitload going on. That's another one. Let's go to another one. Let's go to the Clippers. Paul George. Season in doubt. Yeah, I know. When that injury happened, the wording from Woj made you go, ah, oh, fuck, no. So like when he comes back or if he comes back or something like that. And then this report came out, which I'm not putting a huge amount of credence in. I don't have any sources with the Clippers that are telling me any information on Paul George. But you're saying that they're preparing for him not to be back. And it makes sense. A torn UCL, man, that's a 12-month injury usually in baseball. But it's a very different thing in basketball. But again, the initial thing was re-evaluated in four weeks. He has not been re-evaluated yet. I think, the expect, I think if it came out and said Paul George won't return this season, I wouldn't be surprised. It's not my expectation. So I'm not moving into the year with or the rest of the year with the idea of I have to trade Paul George for anything. If I got an offer of John Collins, that ilk of player for Paul George, I'd probably take it. I am very worried about it, but I'm not at a situation I'm like, he is not playing. Please trade him away. I am not at that spot with him. Uh, but it's a worry. Alex Caruso's recovery from COVID is going very slowly. We thought he might have been back tomorrow. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like he'll be back at all this week. Slow recovery. Last thing, some huge news happening. This Kyrie Irving loophole that if the Nets want him to play in home games, they can. And they just have to pay a 5K fine every game, which for a bloke like Joe Sy is nothing. It, it, it is absolutely nothing. For what, 20 games, like 100 grand they've got to pay. And it means nothing. Do I think that the Nets will do this? No, I don't. And it's not because they can't afford the money. It's got nothing to do with it. I think there is a chance that in a playoff game that they, will, they may do it. Th their, this ability for them to do this has been here all the time, by the way. They did not have to sit out Kyrie Irving at all. They could have, from the very beginning, said, we're just going to play him. He's, a, he's fine to play in road games and in home games, we'll just pay the fine. They could have done that. Um, I don't think this is anything because the negative, the backlash, the negative response to doing this, it's like, oh, just because you're rich, you can just break the rules. It doesn't matter. The 5K doesn't matter to you because you guys got so much money and you're rubbing it in our face. The reaction to that would be so overwhelmingly negative Apart from a very staunch vocal minority going, yeah, Kyrie, you're the man. Based Kyrie, yeah. Rules are stupid, man. Like people would be saying that stuff. Apart from that minority, 
the other overwhelming reaction would be, fuck you, you rich bastards. How dare you rub these rules that we've dealt with for two years in our face? And I don't think, I don't think the Nets will do this. Gut feel, don't know, don't think it's happening. Really don't expect it at all. We'll find out, won't we? As we move forward. So, shit, a lot of news there. Um, sorry, kids, just a blanket cover your ears. I should have mentioned that at the start there as I was just dropping F-bombs left, right, and center. But I'm going to drop a P-bomb on you here. That's prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Do you know what prize picks is? If you don't, what are you doing? You need to figure this stuff out. Prize picks is the best NBA DFS prop game on the market because they're not just having the superstars. They're not having your Kyrie's or your Lillard's or your McCullum's or your Anthony Simons's. They've got your Trendon Watford's. They've got your Dayron Sharps. So what you do, you get four to five players and you just pick over under on certain props, points, rebounds, assists, blocks, steals, fantasy points, whatever. Mash them together up to four to five into one entry and you can win up to 10 times your entry fee. So go sign up, use the code MBA when you sign up and get a 100% match deposit bonus up to $100. And it doesn't just have to be basketball. You can do multiple sport entries as well. So go and uh, go to the website or use the app, download it. It's really easy, fast. Entries are so fast and withdrawals are safe and easy as well. So go to pricepicks.com, use the code NBA or go to your app store and download the app. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. If you're not playing Price Picks, you honestly don't know what you're missing. Let's workshop another phrase there. If you're not playing Price Picks, you're a bloody idiot. How about that? All right, maybe not. Let's go on to the games. We're not going to do most rostered players because... We did a whole waiver wire show today. Or um, yeah, got most added players, more to the point. Let's talk the Celtics. You smashed the Clippers. Not the Clippers, the Pacers. 119 to 100 was your final score there after these two teams played an absolutely stink fest game just a couple of days ago. But big win here for the Celtics. We got um, Tatum having 33, 7, and 4. Two steals, two blocks, four triples. 48%, 58% shooting. And Jalen Brown had the same 58% shooting. 34 and 5 with 7 triples. Big games from both of those guys. Yeah, Tatum's back on track. Like he, He's fine after a really rocky start. 55 fantasy points. No surprise to me, but with Marcus Smart out, Dennis Schroeder played more minutes and put up good scoring. 23 points in 34 minutes on 64% shooting, but when Smart returns, Schroeder will probably just play behind him, play a couple of minutes with him, and that's it. And will not be a 12-team league player. The Rock DJ, Robbie Williams. <laughs> Only 23 minutes. Why? He got smashed in the face by Lance Stevenson, had his face cut open and had to go get stitches. Had to be evaluated for concussion, which he passed. That's why the low minutes. Don't panic. Joshie Richardson played 29. He had 5, 3, and 4. It's fine for a 14-team league, but not for 12s. While Horford was still, like, really not good. 8, 4, and 4 in 28 minutes. And I get that you might want to drop him, but have a realistic look. Is he your worst player? If the answer to that question is yes, then sure. Get rid of him. Is he actually your worst player, though? Or is he your worst player over the last week because you're annoyed at how badly he's playing? But if he is actually your worst player and your worst player is not someone like Monty Morris, then drop him. Um, Grant Williams, 23 minutes, nothing too exciting there. While Peyton Pritchard returned and had three points in 11 minutes. And we finally got, for the Pacers, some players returning. No Chris Duarte still. He probably will be back next game for paternity. But Karis LeVert came back, played 29 minutes, had 16, 1 and 4. Good return. We wanted to see what this would do for Lance Stevenson. Lance played only 21 minutes and had 6, 5, and 6. Now, the 5 and 6 and 2 steals is good. The 27% shooting is not, but this is also a game where Brogdon only played 17 minutes, and Lance was only able to get 21, and this is without Duarte. So I think my evaluation of Lance of being a streamer while those guys are out makes sense, and when players return, he won't be useful, is sort of holding at the moment. But in saying that, Malcolm Brogdon, his Achilles injury, you're going to absolutely fall over yourself, ass over tits here. You're going to be shocked, but he wasn't able to finish the game because his Achilles was sore. This is a month-long problem for Brogo. I am going to be stunned if he plays in the next game. I am not dropping Malcolm Brogdon. No, I just drop him. Get rid of the heartache. Get rid of the frustrations. And I get the mentality. I don't think it's the wise thing to do. But do I think that Brogdon is going to make it to the end of the season? No, I don't. No, not at all. And he is getting really close to the just trading for anything sort of scenario. Not drop him. If I could get a top 80 guy back for Brogdon, I reckon I'd do it. Just I have no confidence in this Achilles being healthy at all this season. It's a very big worry. Deeper leagues, you'll want to pick up Kiefer Sykes, not 12-team leagues. They'll start Levert at point guard and probably Duarte at the two when he's back. Deeper leagues for Sykes. Um, Dwayne Washington got 14 minutes, had four points. Cool. Maybe they start, uh, start Washington. 
And Justin Holiday had 13, um, while uh, Tory Craig had zero points in 27 minutes. Shout out Tony Snell. Yeah, really frustrating stuff, though, with um, Brogdon. Oh, yeah, speaking of uh, frustrating, Miles Turner played 24 minutes. He did have some foul trouble, but 18 and 4. I still think that the minutes are frustrating, and he is a buy low option because I think if he gets traded, and I think it's a gigantic, gigantic likelihood that he gets dealt, that he's going to go somewhere where he plays more minutes, and his numbers are going to go through the roof. Yeah, through the roof, I think is, a, is, is fair to say for, uh, for Miles Turner. And I think it was interesting that a Pacers reporter made it clear to say, hey, uh, Miles Turner wasn't actually made available to the media post game. And the fact that the reporter mentioned that as a fact, we didn't mention who else wasn't made available, but the fact that the Pacers wouldn't put Turner out there because they know he's probably going to rip them, and that the reporter knew that there was something that Turner was going to say or talk about and made a point that they weren't made available, I think is something to really connect the dots on. Very, very interesting to see if he goes and where he ends up. Sabonis, 32 minutes, 17, 6 and 6 with two steals. Pretty good numbers there from Sabonis in 38 minutes. Let's look at the next game. This one was the Charlotte. I've got a feeling, sorry guys, it's going to be a big night tonight. Uh, Charlotte and the Sixers, big win for the Hornets, 109-98. Gordy Haywood on fire. 30 points on 81% with four threes, seven assists and three steals. I reckon he popped up on a buy low show not that long ago. That's good stuff. 52 fantasy points there, while Bridges played 40 minutes for 21 and 8. And Rogier played 41 minutes for 22 and two threes, four assists and two steals. That's a lot of minutes in a 20-point victory. Not 20-point victory, sorry. My mistake. I can't count. 11-point victory. Um, good numbers. Rogier's on a real hot streak. A bit of a sell high. Lamelo Ball, I think, is a buy low. 13, 7 and 8. The, the minutes are there, but 31% shooting. He's now 99th over the last two weeks. He's dropped to 14th for the season, but a real buy low opportunity. PJ Washington had foul trouble. That's why he played 19 minutes, and that's also why Mason Plumley played 26. Six and four for Plummer, while two and eight for Washington. Hold PJ in 12s, barely. Plumley, no way. And Cody Martin, 11 and three in 25. He's a nice steals option, a nice short term back end streamer while Ubre is out. For the Sixers, Embiid had 31 and six, and I saw somewhere, I'm just going to double check this, um, that this is the fifth straight game that he has scored 31 points. That's pretty good. 31-6-3, 59% shooting. Got to the line 14 times and hit 71% of them. Embiid is putting up some very big numbers. Seventh ranked player this season. Let me just bring up those numbers now. He has scored 31 points in five consecutive games. Exactly 31 points. He has also scored at least 31 points in eight consecutive games. As the kids would say, she. Tobias Harris, 17, 8, and 5. He's dealing with a big shoulder problem. A bit worried about him. And we know he's been below average all season, the thick hogsman. Oops. Um, I think I am a TH. T to the H. Yeah, TH for life. Hopefully, it doesn't lead to a prolonged absence. Tyrese Maxey returned from an absence. 10 points on 13%. That's shocking. Two threes still holding, while Seth Curry had 10 points, two threes, three rebounds, and three assists. Actually, Curry and Maxey's line was, was identical. 10, three, and three with two threes. Just Curry added a steal um, and shot the ball considerably better. Both guys are holds. While Ferky from Turkey played 27 and had 14 points. He's a nice, like, 14 to 16 team league guy. Um... And that's about it. Well, Andre Drummond had two points and somehow missed all four of his free throws and went one of two from the um, free throw, one of two from the field. So rough stuff there. And I just saw this. And I think it's worth mentioning here. Just to go back to some of the Damian Lillard stuff. I just saw someone post a question on Basketball Monster. Um, I said, is it, is it a waste to use my number one waiver priority? On him? Yes. And I, I am going to go type this, this man. Yes. It is a gigantic waste to use waiver priority number one on adding Damian Lillard. Just in case anyone else listening to this may have had that thought. It is the biggest waste that you could think of. Matisse Thibel, 16 minutes, zero points. Cool, one block, cool. I do not think that Matisse Thibel is a must roster player. I've said that for a very long time. He can be an interesting guy for defensive stats, but defensive stats are weird. You can have three blocks and then zero blocks and have a stretch of zero blocks or zero steals. And when the minutes are this low, it's really frustrating. I do not care if he is on the waiver wire. Like, if he's on my waiver, I look at it and go, ah, oh, yeah, all right, fine, maybe, maybe not. Not a must roster player. Not really close to a must. A fine guy to have if it fits exactly what you need in the right circumstance. But as a must, not remotely close. But 
we are remotely close to Bet Online, wishing you a happy new betting year. In fact, it's right here, 2022. Bang, happy new betting year. Bet Online is the number one spot for all of your sports wagering action for 2022. So new year and a new updated desktop site, as well as a mobile site. And when you do that, when you go sign up, use our code locked on and get a 50% welcome match deposit bonus. From basketball to football, the NHL, boxing, UFC, or right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait and take advantage of all of the fantastic offers available for the 2022 year. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, next game, we did get the Orlando Magic, the Magic Wizards game. Love the Magic Wizards games. Um, we got the Magic going down to the Wizards, 112, 106. Cole Anthony, the shooting is a real problem at the moment, isn't it? 19, 11, and 9, they're good counters. No problem with that, but 35%. And this was the problem with him last year, just consistently bad shooting. And he started out on fire this year, and it has dropped off pretty considerably. Not dropping him, of course, but it's a worry. Franz Wagner, also in a little bit of a slump. The 10 assists are great. That's a career high. He was smashing around, but I think he had that 10th assist about three minutes into the second half and then didn't have another one for the rest of the game. And again, he shot poorly, 38%. He's dropping off somewhat at the moment. Still a must-hold player, though. There was no Carter or Bumba, so they started Lopez and Akiki. Lopez had 16 and 11. Good. That's good. Akiki had 10 and 4 with two steals and a block and two threes. That's also good. There's also just no long-term value in either of these players. Terry Ross had 17 and 3. Three threes, sorry, with two blocks. The two blocks is fake, but the three threes and 17 points. And the minutes are fine. He's been producing at a really high level. It is going to drop. It is going to drop precipitously as the season moves on. While Roderick Hampton, uh, they don't like this bloke at all. Two points in 17 minutes. Well, Gaz Harris had the 14. Not much else there for Gaz. And I think you know, Suggs is back next week. Fultz is back, maybe at some point, who knows. But Suggs is going to have an impact on Harris and on Ross. And it's probably going to make them both maybe not 12-team league guys. And on to the Wizards. Haven't hit this one for a while. Probably should have hit it the other day, but Thomas the Tank Bryant. He's back. I predicted he'd play 10 minutes. He played 11 minutes 30, just a little bit off. Six points, hit his first shot at corner three. Didn't miss a shot, in fact. Hit both of his shots. Six, one, and one. He looks big. He looks strong. He looks like he's in a three-way timeshare for center minutes. Basically, it played out as poorly as we could have hoped for. No decision made by Wes Unsold as to who he was playing. 21 minutes for Harrell. 16 minutes for Gafford. 12 minutes for Bryant. I do not believe Thomas Bryant is a 12-team league player this season. Harrell had 16 and 8. That's great. But in 21 minutes a night, I don't believe he's going to remain a 12-team league player. Dan Gafford had 8 and 3 with 2 blocks. The 2 blocks and 100% shooting is still useful. And he's actually a top 60 player over the last 2 weeks, Gaff. If he's playing 16 a night, he's not a 12-team league guy. If I have Harrell, I will hold. If I have Gafford, I will hold. But I, I, this is not going to go in the right direction. It's just going to be frustrating. And this is before Rui Hachimura does anything. 12 minutes, 3 points. Oh, by the way, Rui Hachimura, just in case, no offense to the bloke. Get that garbage out of here! Should not be a 12 or a 14 team league player. The future MVP, Kyle Kuzma. Not quite as good as other games, but 19, 10, and 9. Also, absolute pure comedy at the end when all he was trying to do was get a triple-double because getting 10 assists means you have a good game. Nine, not so good. Uh, threw one out to Corey Kispert, who then kicked the pass onto someone else with about 40 seconds left. And Kuzma stood in the paint while the ball was in the air, like screaming at Kispert, hands up in the air, like kids cover your ears. Like, what are you fucking doing? Shoot it, shoot it. I want my triple-double. Mate, Kuz, calm down. It's great to see him expanding his game and getting these assists. But again, he did this on 64% shooting. He is the biggest sell high option out there. And if you have him and don't sell him and write it out, that's totally fine. But if someone was to come and offer you a top 50 player and you don't take it, yeah, I think that's bad management. KCP had 12 and 10, four assists. His numbers are okay while Beal is out, while Dinwiddie had 17, two and four and two steals and continuing to put up good numbers while Beal is out. We got another 29 minutes of Kispert. He had 11 points in those 29 minutes with three threes. He's a streamer in deeper formats for the old um, three-pointers, but that's probably about it. And I don't really see him being any sort of long-term option, uh, really, in, in most formats, especially when players like Beal end up returning. That'll take me on to the next game. Yeah, it does. On to the next game. 
the Dallas Mavericks. They get absolutely ass smacked by the New York Knicks. Just a huge, huge loss. The Knicks win at 108 85. No Porzingis. Doncic, pretty bad. Look, 21 11 and 5 is fine, but when you go 35% from the field and 67 from the line, it's shit out. When you shoot 11% from three, it's bad. Doncic is now the 21st ranked player this season. He still had 43 fantasy points. This is why, um, you know, I, probably, I went probably too high on him. I had him about seven maybe in drafts, maybe eight. I can't remember. It was too, it's too high. Um, and never made sense to be picking him at one for a start off. And he is disappointing. And the ankle, and he was grabbing at his back in this game. A bit worried about him. Brunson had 14, seven, and six good numbers. Well, Timmy Hardaway got the minutes up, but still only 13 points. He's not a must roster player. Kleber had nine. He played 37 minutes. He hit three threes. He had a block. Shot only 30%, but when Paul Singers comes back, the value is just not going to be there. Well, Finney Smith struggled. If you want to move on from Finney Smith, do it. Who cares? Like, it's not the biggest move to hold or to drop. And if you want to drop him, it doesn't actually matter. Well, Josh Green, who'd been playing well, did not. He had a one point in 11 minutes as his minutes dropped way off. And Dwight Powell had four points in his 17 minutes. For the Knickerbockers, um, Mitchie Robinson. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Yeah, he does. 19 and 10, two blocks and 90%. That's great for the bloke who's the 135th ranked player this season. He's obviously been disappointing for most of the year, but yeah, some good numbers. And speaking of disappointing for most of the year, Rowan Barrett. But this is huge. 32 points, 41 minutes, seven rebounds, four threes. Huge volume, great efficiency. I don't buy it at all in terms of this being the new RJ Barrett, not in the slightest. But he's playing very well at the moment and add him, try it, ride it, drop him. Alec Burks. Alec Berg. 10 points on 22%. His shooting this year has been abysmal. But eight rebounds, six assists, two steals, and two threes. And it feels like to me that Kemba Walker is not returning soon. And when he does, will not be playing the big role that he was before, if he plays at all. That Kemba's a clear drop. And Burks is solid enough as a back-end guy. Well, Julius Randle got some good counting stats. Yeah, some good counting stats here for uh, the Double Royal. It's basically a mirror of Luka Doncic. 17, 12, and 8, but 35 from the field and 67 from the line with no defensive stats, and he continues to struggle. 143rd ranked player over the last two weeks. The disease scrotum had 13 points in 33 minutes, while Emmanuel quickly only played 14 because he got into some foul trouble. And Nerlens Noel finally returned, and he did Nerlens Noel things. One steal, two blocks. That's what you have Nerlens Noel for. So if you want stats like that, he can help you in those categories. That is it. All right, the next game, a blowout. The Miami Heat... They take down the Hawks, and I know that it was great from the Hawks last year, and Lloyd Pierce was gone, and Nate McMillan came in, they made this huge run. But remember why Nate McMillan was fired in Indiana? Because like, he wasn't very good. Like, he was all right, and he is struggling. Their defense is atrocious. He was very rigid and unimaginative in Indiana, and things are not going particularly well here, are they? 115.91. Let's talk about the Heat. The Undertaker returned. He played 18 minutes, Dwayne Dedman. Seven and eight with two blocks. Solid numbers, but that doesn't matter because Omer Yet seven is the starter. 13, 10 and, 10 and six for the Yurt with a block in 29 minutes. And that's great. We hold Yurt. When Bam comes back, it's not going to be pretty and he won't be able to continue this number. But he is the 52nd ranked player over the last two weeks and he's a clear must hold. Hero had 21, nine and 11. We've got to do it. We've got to, we've got to salute. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a and I think pretty fittingly that he is the 69th ranked player this season. Giggity! He's been a huge surprise and he was awesome here. No Jimmy Butler again, so Caleb Barton had 18 and 10 in his 33 minutes. Pretty good numbers for Caleb. He's only a streamer. While Max Struess continues to start over Duncan Robinson. Oh yeah, Max Struess, Jack Armstrong, what do you reckon? Get that garbage out of here! He played 15 minutes and let me tell you something. It's not getting better when Jimmy Butler returns. 11 points in 15 minutes while Robinson... Played 32 for 14 points in three threes. Struess, Robinson, Martin, Vincent, none of these are 12-team league options. Gabe Vincent had 14 points with four threes and two steals. Good in his return. But again, there's just not enough minutes there. Lowry struggled, eight points on 22%, but five assists and three steals is not bad. And we're starting to see the, the constriction of value with all these wing players returning. All we need is Jimmy back to really put an end to it. For the Hawks... Um, John Ray Hunter came back. He played off the bench and played 24 minutes. And the shot was all right. 15 points. He took a lot of them. 11 shots, three threes. Still in a block. But as has been his problem all year, he can't rebound or get assists. One rebound and zero assists. Is he fine if you want to grab in 12s? I mean, sure. 
I don't feel a huge need to do it. I don't look at this and go, this is a must roster 12 team league player. But I just think it's going to be, it's him, it's Bogdanovich, it's Herder, it's Luau Cabro, apparently for some reason. It's Reddish. They're all just going to eat into each other's playing time. Bogdan had 15 and five with three threes without Reddish and Herder played off the bench because he had to play behind Luau Cabro for some reason. Seven, one and four with two steals. Rough night for, for Fanta Pants. Kevin Herder is not a 12 team league player. Go ahead and drop him. 15, three and five for Trey Young as him, Hunter and Bogdanovich all score 15 points. High scorer was Johnny Collins, 16 and 11 with three threes. He was one of the worst players in the NBA last game. Well, you know, dot of the night, I think he got. Uh, good bounce back from him there. Well, Okongwu uh, struggled. 24 minutes, six points, seven rebounds, a steal and a block. But as long as Capella is out, I will hold on to Anyeka Okongwu. Gallinari played 26 minutes. He had seven and five. But again, you add Reddish to this mix. Lou Williams didn't even play here, but add Reddish to this mix. And it's just hard to see how Hunter Bogdanovich, Luau Cabro, Herda, Reddish how they're all going to be able to play enough to matter for most leagues. The Houston Rockets, they win on the road against the San Antonio Spurs, 128-124. The wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. One of his good games, 13 points, but six rebounds, seven assists, one steal and three blocks. That's really good. 100% shooting is really good also. But we know that he's inconsistent. He's 161st over the last two weeks. He's a good game. And he's a fringe 12-team league player. Eric Gordon was unstoppable. 31 points on 90% shooting with six triples. But again, he's a fringe guy. Like, we, this is not him. No one's this good. No one's this good of a shooter. Um, well, Kevin Porter had a much better game. 30 minutes, 18, 4, and 2. Still bad from the line, but 60% shooting. No defensive stats. It's still not an elite game by any means. And it's not one that if you dropped him, you'd go, oh, I can't believe I did it. You wouldn't think that after this game, but it is a big improvement. While Jalen Green had 14 and 8 on 29%. And, and he's getting back to the guy that was struggling a lot before the hamstring injury. Is he a hold? A pretty soft hold at this point. And think even a 10-team league, you would drop. Josh Christopher, 6 and 3, but not enough minutes to matter too much at this stage. Still watching him while Woody had 23 and 11 with two steals and a block. You can drop Gary Bird, zero points in 16 minutes. Um, and they also brought Josh, uh, not Josh, uh, DJ Augustin, not Josh Augustin, don't know who that is. DJ Augustin back, 20 minutes, nine points, cool. Don't know why. Onto the Spurs. They were still without Derek White, but they welcomed back Devin Vassell and Calden Johnson, but they played off the bench and they played all right. 24 minutes for Calden, 18 points with five rebounds and two threes. That's a really good game for Calden Johnson coming off the bench. I still don't think he's a 12-team league player, and the minutes will go up. Well, Vassell played 22 minutes and had 12-5 and five with a block and a, and a three. Good game in low minutes. I still believe Vassell has an opportunity to be a 12-team league guy this year, but I wouldn't say that he's a must-roster player. Well, Lonnie Walker, drop him. Josh Primo, drop him. 11-2 and two for Lonnie, 4-2-5 and five for Primo. The return of Vassell, the return of Johnson, the impending return of White is going to impact him. It's also going to impact Bryn Forbes. But he didn't care today. 32 minutes, 21 points, six triples and two steals. Good game from Forbesy. He's had a couple of those, but there is no way that that is any sort of realistic long-term thing. While Pirtle had 13 and six with two steals and two blocks, a big game. And Murray, 32, 10, 11, four threes, three steals. Great, awesome, sick. 16th ranked player over the course of the season. 70 fantasy points, just a huge game. And with everyone coming back, my man Devontae Kachok played only three minutes. So that dream is over. Um, the next one, the Cleveland Cavaliers against the undermanned Utah Jazz. They just go in and they just go bang, smash. See you later. 111.91. They were without Rajon Rondo. So the Rondo experience has lasted three games. Ha hamstring tightness there. How about Lamar Stevens? Don't have to make it. This 30 minutes, 23 points, seven rebounds and two steals. 67% shooting. Yes, Rondo. Yes, Okoro will impact him. But that's a lot, man. That is a lot. I wouldn't recommend him as a 12-team ad. Finally, a good game from Markkinen. 20 in points, 4 threes, 6 rebounds, 35 minutes, while Mobley had 15, 10, and 7, and Allen had 12 and 7. But Chetty Osman, the discman, man. The minutes are there. Just the, the shooting, man. 8 points on 25% is shitful. 2 steals is nice. The opportunity's there. I think he might be still worth a hold. But he's not anywhere close to being this huge priority, must hold under every circumstance player. He's going to be up and he's going to be down. And he's down at the moment and he'll probably be up next week. But the, the opportunity is there. 
16 and 7 for Kevin Love, and as expected with these players returning, Love went from a 28 minute guy down to 21, 22 again, and that's fine. That's sort of where he's going to be rest of season, it appears. And we'll see what that means for his value. He was always playing significantly above his head with that level of production in those minutes. And we're seeing it start to cool off a little bit here for Lovey. We'll see. It's 21, 21, and 14 minutes in the last three games with players returning. On to the Jazz. They were without Rudy Gobert. They were without Hassan Whiteside and Rudy Gay. Then Daniel House pulled out, and then Norval Powell was out. And then Joe Ingles returned and got ejected. So they started at center, Royce O'Neal. Remember, two center fantasy leagues are kids. You know what to do. Fucking garbage. They are stupid. The triangle Eric Pascal had 18 and 7 in 33 minutes. Good stream option with all those players out, and that is it. Don Mitchell, 17, 5 and 4, while O'Neal had a pretty good game. Two threes, two steals, and a block. He's been pretty bad recently, but good to see some okay numbers. Solid 14 team league player. Jordan Clarkson. J O R D A N C L A R K S O N. 22 points with four threes. Good, but sell high. Absolutely sell high. Well, Conley had 12 and Bogdanovich struggled. 9, 2, and 1 on 21%. Just a rough night overall for the Jazz with so many of their players out. All right, so let's go to the next game the Lakers and the Kings. The Lakers lose again. 116, 125. Let's start with the good. 29 minutes for Malik Monk. 22.6 22.6 triples, two blocks. He's a must-roster player. Bit of a bump last game, bump down, but he's just rolling. He is their best option there, and he played well. Austin Reeves was great also. 28 minutes, 19 points, four threes. Closed the game over Trevor Ariza, who started over Stanley Johnson. And again, just so many of these off-season acquisitions make no... They don't make sense. Like Relying upon 37-year-old Trevor Ariza with an ankle surgery, it's not a good idea. He had two points a reason with three steals. Reeves was great. 19 points, four threes. I don't rely upon that. And I don't know they're going to play him big enough minutes to even make an impact in most fantasy leagues. But I am watching it because I think he's good. LeBron James, 39 minutes for the goat. Fucking goat outside. It's just a goat. No, it's a fucking goat. He continues to put up huge numbers. 34, seven and six with three threes. He didn't shoot particularly well, especially the 5 of 10 from the line. And one of the big reasons why I was so off on LeBron in terms of projections this year are his shooting numbers are just through the roof, like career-high type numbers. Um, Here, they were way off. 45% on 29 shots is not great. 5 of 10 from the line is obviously pretty poor, and that drops his value down in this game. But he's been excellent this season. Um, Yeah, he's been killing it. We know that. Um, What should we go to next? Taylor Horton Tucker had 9 points in 19 minutes, while Stan Johnson had 8 in 12 minutes. The idea that Stanley Johnson was going to be a savior on this team was obviously foolish and was never going to be realistic. And we've seen him turn into Stanley Johnson that we've seen for four or five years. A guy that can defend okay, but it's just too much of a liability on the other end to have any sort of long-term impact. And we want to talk about liabilities. Russell Westbrook played 37 minutes. He had 8, 12, and 6. Close to a triple-double, I guess. But he was actually terrible. And he is... Is this a hot take? I don't know. He is not a good NBA player. He should not close games for the Lakers. And this is what I've been saying about Russell Westbrook for years. The athleticism is sick. The rebounding is great. The crashing and dunking and getting to the rim is fine. But your inability to, kids, cover your ears, pull your fucking head in and not take the worst shots ever when you are literally one of the, if not the worst shooter in the NBA, when you account for volume, he is the worst shooter, I think, in the NBA. The complete lack of self-awareness or the inability to listen to others or maybe an attitude that he gives off where others are too scared to tell him, Russ, you're fucking terrible. Stop doing it. Vogel needs to pull him out and just bench him. He is horrifically bad. And he used to be one of my favorite players. Right, absolutely. But I hate terrible decision making. Like oh, I'm, gonna, I'm Russ, I'm going to dribble down into a two-on-one contested pull-up long two. My guy, you can't shoot. Pass it to somebody. Pass it to anybody. Austin Reeves, Malik Monk, LeBron James, anybody. The lack of self-awareness, the horrific decision making is killing this team. We killed them for the trade in the offseason. And I had doubts. Am I being too harsh? Maybe Westbrook does make them unbeatable. No, he makes them 
are actually beatable and they might have a chance. This might be hyperbolic. They'd have a better chance of winning, I reckon, at this point if he didn't play. That's how detrimental Westbrook's play is at the moment. Is he dealing with an injury? I don't know. I'll just wait for second half for us. Well, how much more can we wait? He's been terrible. You can't trade him away because no one will take him. It's just bad. He needs to just understand where he is and take on a completely different role because it's, it's embarrassing at the moment. And I'm sure Lakers fans, I'm sure... And I think it's more being brought to the fore now because he plays for Lakers. He just did this shit in Washington. He did this shit in Houston at times. Like, it's just way more amplified now because, A, he's older and he doesn't have the same athleticism. His defensive issues have always been like this. And we're just seeing them all come to the fore. He's actually, actually really bad. Wow. Uh, the Kings. My man, Chemezi Metu. He Richie Bernard. Two for two, two, two. 14 and seven, four assists and two steals, two blocks and two threes. He started at center. They were going to start Alex Len, then changed their mind and started Metu. Now, of course, when Holmes comes back and then there's Jones coming back, I don't know where Metu fits. I tell you now, he should be starting over Bagley. He is a better prospect than Bagley. He's a better player than Bagley. Is he a 12-team grab? Uh, I don't have faith in the consistency of that. I wouldn't mind it, but it's the Kings, so he'll probably play 19 minutes next game. In a deeper league, sure, grab him. Stream him for now, even if you want, but I don't have much faith in it. Halliburton had 14, 3, and 10, two steals and a block. We've seen his numbers start to come back after that top 20 run. That was obviously the sell high. He's now 41st over the last two weeks. While the pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnsy! That's how you can tell that I'm getting better because I can actually put the full throat into the Harrison Barnes. I can get the full Barnesy going. Whereas before, I had to be more Barnesy. Just, just a subtle difference. Um, Darren Fox had 29 points, but of course, just some you know lack of steals, lack of threes hurts. Good percentages though. While Bagley had 16 and 9, and I'm shitting on Bagley a little bit. He played 30 minutes, but this is the problem. One assist, zero blocks, one of two from the line. He is not a 12-team league player. He just isn't. Buddy Heald is a fringe guy as well. 10 points in 29 minutes for Budrick with two triples. And the Kings, good for them to get that victory. The last game of the night was one that was shaping up to be okay. And then the Nets just went, nah, we're good. We're going to smash this. And they did. They beat the Bulls 138 to 112 as I just bring that up onto the screen. Just a huge win on the road for Brooklyn. Missing a bunch of players. There was no Joe Harris, of course, but no Aldridge, no Claxton. So they started. The bloke that I wanted to keep an eye on, Dayron Sharp. 22 minutes for Sharpie. He fouled out. But when you go 20 and 7 with a block on 71%, I don't give a shit if you foul out. And there is a real chance that Claxo maybe misses the next game tomorrow. And Aldridge misses again. And Sharpie gets an opportunity to go bananas. Great stream for tomorrow. Might not work out. Great stream. Jimmy Harden looked pretty bloody dangerous, didn't he? 25, 7, and 16, while Durant had 27, 2, and 9, and 2 steals. And it was a rusty Kyrie Irving. The problem with having Kyrie Irving on your roster is that if he's going to play in 45% of the games, because there is going to be a game where he rests or gets injured or something, that every time you have a below average game, it's harder to get back to being at your same level because you've got half the amount of games to be able to do it. Nine, four, and three on 40%. And rust is going to be a factor. Um, that's the issue. This is why I think if he has a big game, you got it. any top 50 player, you've got to trade him for it. I know he's a top 10 player. You have to trade for a top 50 when you get that opportunity, I think. They did what I suggested they do. And instead of starting David Duke, they started Kessler Edwards. And I thought he was all right. 29 minutes, nine points, three steals and a block. He's just a good defensive wing who can shoot. And I think that's what they need to get the spacing in there. While Millsy had 21 points in 22 minutes and six triples, Duke only played the seven minutes. Cam Thomas only played 16. Steve Nash continues to just screw around with the rotations. It's hard to get a full gauge on things, but I'm watching Edwards for deepers. I'm watching Sharp, especially to stream tomorrow. And does this Sharp explosion, does that change the Claxton Aldridge Sharp dynamic? Millsap's been jettisoned. James Johnson's done. Where does Griffin fit? He played 20 minutes here for nine points. Very interesting stuff. I think there's a small chance that Sharp has an impact on Claxton. Just watch that. The Bulls, they were just done. Like they, they, They've had a really busy schedule. Uh, it's on a back-to-back. They just weren't good. 22.6 assists for Levine. That's pretty good. Ball, 9-7-7. Seven, seven. Solid enough. 
Kobe White hit some threes. He had 16 points with four threes in 25 minutes. And as I detailed earlier, Caruso's recovery is going slow. So he does have an increased role moving forward here for at least the next couple of games. And with the absence, I think, of Derek Jones for a pretty bloody long time after what was a um, nasty looking knee injury. And if he is not out for the season, I will be very surprised. I don't know that, but I would be surprised if he's not out for the season. There is opportunities there. Stick to Rosen back at the four. You can start um, White. You can put Javante Green when he comes back. You can start Troy Brown. You can start Caruso, whatever. But it means they're going to have to lean more into the small. They did go with Alfonso McKinney. He's not the answer to any question, really, unless the question is, who's a bloke who shouldn't be playing in the NBA? That's harsh on him. He's probably an NBA caliber player. Uh, Five points in 20 minutes. He's not a fantasy caliber player. The DeMar DeRozan slump continues. 19-4, and but bad from the line, 71%. That's not bad, but it is bad when you're hitting seven, taking seven attempts. And that's your number one fantasy category. And then just 44 from the field. 19-4-1. and one. He is outside the top 120 over the last two weeks, DeRozan. This is why he was a sell high when he was a top 15 player. Now he's a buy low. He's a huge buy low. But he's not getting back, I don't think, to that same level that he was at the beginning of the year. Vooch had 14-5 and five on 30. The amount of times this dude has shot under 40% this season, I feel like every time I look, He's under 40%. Um, yeah, continues to just be blah and nowhere near where he was last season. Let's go to the line of the night before I keep you guys for too long. The monstrous line of the night is Jimmy Harden. Not really a surprise there. Your waiver wire is Chemezi Metu. The young gun is the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. And the dud of the night's the big avocado, Andre Drummond. Your top 10 players for nine category leagues today. Number one, Harden, then Tatum, Haywood, Durant, Jalen Brown, Malik Monk, DeJounte Murray, Chemezi Metu, Mitchie Robinson, and the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma. For the guys available in on waivers, Metu's at number one. Just talked about him, maybe, but doubts. Eric Gordon's a streamer. Lamar Stevens is a 14-team league guy. Bryn Forbes, no value. Eric Paschal, no real value. Dayron Sharp, very interesting for tomorrow. Dwayne Dedman, don't think so. Austin Reeves, I keep an eye on it, but that's just like 18-teamers. Kata bates Diop, no thanks. And Cody Martin's a nice 12-team streamer. And then your top 10 in points leagues, DeJounte, followed by Jim Harden, Tatum, LeBron, Haywood, Hero, Durant, Garland, Cole, Anthony, and Christian Wood. That will do it for me today. Big, big show. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And audio-wise, follow on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app, guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.